Welcome to the Pieces of Me podcast. Nothing missing, nothing broken, complete wholeness. It's the many pieces of you that makes you, you. The happy, insecure, family, lovable pieces. The relationship, laughable, hurt, spiritual, and the broken pieces. Grab your pieces and let's journey together to our complete wholeness. I am your host, Denisha Ballard, and I'm so excited that you joined me today. Come on, let's get started. Welcome back, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. I know, you know, I really was not planning on publishing an episode this week because we are all so very excited about what's going to take place tomorrow, if you're listening, Thursday, Friday, April 12th at 7.30 p.m. Meet us on Facebook Live. Look for Denisha, Denisha Ballard. Look for Delisa Flanagan. We are really, really, really excited to sit at the table with the single versus the married sister. We are going to get on the same page some way, somehow. Yes, we are. And we are looking forward to that opportunity tomorrow because it's going to be hot and you do not want to miss it. But today, at this very moment, um, I've received a lot of feedback from the podcast via email, text messages, phone calls, however you guys choose to communicate with me. Yes, I received it. Um, and because I received it, I have had a, I don't want to use the word heavy heart, but things that concern you concern me. And before we sit at the table, before we get to Friday, April 12th, and the a few weeks beyond that, um, because tomorrow will not be the only time you see me and my sister together speaking on this topic. But before we get there, before we continue on this journey to our complete wholeness in that direction, I have to communicate to my fellow singles, whether you're male, whether you're female, let's just have a very quick, candid conversation, dialogue. I wish I could hear what you got to say, but I know because you guys have been doing it, I know I'm going to hear from you. Um, and we will, I will set up something so that we will have an opportunity to, um, come together and share feedback one-on-one, um, to, so that I, you, I want to hear you. I don't want to wait until the episode has um, been published and and it's over. I really want to sit at the table with a few of you so that we can have the conversations that need to be, need to be had. But today I, I, I understand um, I, I've never, ever really lived my life as if it was something that was untrue. Um, I'm pretty much in anyone, anybody that knows me knows that what you see is what you get with Denisha. Um, I'm one that you never really have to second guess. This is who I am. This is who I am at home, at church, on the job with my friends. This is me. This, this is me. Um, so don't one, don't think for one second that the feedback and your concerns, I, I don't know about because I wholeheartedly, I do. Social media only gets probably maybe almost kind of, sort of 30 to 35% of my life. That means that there's a whole lot of my life that, that doesn't really make it to social media. And um, because of that, I want you to know I understand the struggles of singleness. I am um, freshly out of a very long relationship, and I have to give myself grace. Grace to say that it hurt. It still hurts. Um, I, I have to be honest and say that going through a breakup, is just as hard as grief. It's a form of grief, especially when you're with someone for such an an amount of time, a certain amount of time. It's just like that connection there. Um, I'm not ready to publicly discuss my relationship, but I will say that it hurts. Um, And I'm just, I'm still grieving it out and it's okay. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. I'm not grieving it out where I'm, uh, looking for the next, even though I would love a hug from somebody, but I'm not grieving to that point where I am jumping from one relationship to the next. 
I'm not doing that. I want to speak very briefly on the waiting room. And I feel like those of you who have reached out to me and connected with me, we are all, we, yeah, we, we are all in the waiting room together. What happens in the waiting room? You walk in, you check in, you see the person behind the desk and you usually tell them, hi, my name is Denisha Ballard. I am here to see this person. I have an appointment at this time. The person behind the desk will usually say, um, do you have your identification and or your method of payment? Sometimes they'll even have you sign a form or two. Depends on what the appointment is. You handle your business with them, and then they will say these words. Okay, please have a seat, and someone will be with you momentarily. Listen out for your name. There is no time frame. I have never, I can't recall the last time I went to a doctor's office, and um, I actually received a, they'll be with you in five minutes. Mm Mm-mm. Nope. They don't know. You don't know. That's why it's called the waiting room, the holding room. And it's a whole lot of us in the waiting room. So what did we do? We walked in or we got on our knees. We had our time with God. Hey, God, (laughs) it's me again, Denisha. Well, my Lord, we discussed this. We talked about this. You promised me this. And then you know what his response is? Okay, I heard you. Have a seat. Listen for your name. So we're all sitting in the waiting room. We're waiting on our name to be called for one thing or another. And I am a, I'm an only parent too, you guys. So this thing with my life, it's far beyond um, a relationship with a man. It's far beyond it. Single parent, only parent, all things on me. I'm in the waiting room. And I see a whole lot of y'all in here with me. But the thing is, some of us are handling this waiting room experience a little different than others. What I do not want us to do is make longing for love, companionship, a partner, our main priority. Get that out of your head. Stop doing that. I want you to focus on living your life like it's golden. I want you to focus on things that can't break your soul. Because if you constantly focus on what you don't have right now, you will absolutely, totally miss all the wonderful things that you do have. Yes, we all want to be loved. Yes, we want someone to take care of us. Yes, we want companionship. No, we don't want to die alone. But are we going to wallow in what we don't have or are we going to embrace what we do have while we are in the waiting room? While you're in the waiting room, some people look for a distraction, but make sure it's a healthy distraction. Don't get caught up. And you know what? I actually had a conversation with myself because I didn't been, I have, I don't want to talk about me, but some, I have definitely been in a situation where I've always said, God, I don't want to miss what you have for me, holding on to what's not your will for me. Oh, let me put that one on repeat for me. God, I don't want to miss what you really have for me, holding on to what's not your will for me. Sometimes I think I did, but my God is bigger. Oh my goodness. My God, he's got me. He knew my end at my beginning. He knew how this relationship for me was going to end. And he knew how long it was going to take for me to go through these uh, ups and downs, these hoops and loops, these hiccups before I finally said, "Mm mm-mm. I can't do this anymore in the waiting room. I am in the waiting room. Then you start looking at the biological clock. Well, I'm a little different when it comes to that. However, you start looking at the clock and you're just like, I'm not getting any younger. For me, my daughter's off to college in five years. I won't even be 50. So what happens then with my life? 
I have to start living day to day. I have to start making sure that just as much as my daughter is a priority, I am a priority. I cannot wake up every day and complain that I'm single. You cannot wake up every day and wallow in misery because you are still single. Let me tell y'all a little secret. Be careful what you pray for too. That's why it's not our will, but his will being done in our life. God, I trust you. I just told you last week that I said to God, very, very, very simple and clear. I said, God, what am I not doing? And his response to me was, you're not trusting me, Denisha. Trusting God is trusting him. It's not begging and pleading with him. Now, if that's your relationship with him, go ahead and do it. But I want to be in a place where my faith is so, 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 so strong. I say, you know what, God, I trust you and I go on about my business. I'm going to sit in this waiting room. And while I'm in the waiting room, I'm texting my girlfriends. I'm watching my shows. I'm eating the emails. I'm establishing myself. I'm working on my business plan. I'm doing stuff for me. I am not. I'm also pouring into others because that's what I do. That's what I love to do. I don't want to be so consumed with the missing pieces or what I think are the missing pieces in my life that I miss life. Going back real quick with the being careful what you pray for. I am surrounded by married women. And truth be told, some of those married women don't want to be married. Be careful what you ask for. Lord, please help me to find contentment in your will for my life. Because if it's not for me, I still want to enjoy this journey. I still want to feel love by my family and my friends. I still want to be at peace. I still want to enjoy life. I still want to go on vacations. I still want you to be the head of my life. Always providing, always being there, always loving me, always taking care of me, always healing me, always being my companion, always being my closest friend. Because still, I don't care who you with, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Nobody. So, just like I said, this was going to be very, 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 very quick. We're all in the waiting room. Whether it's with your relationship, whether it's with um, decisions needing to be made for your life, whether it's waiting on reports, we're all in the waiting room, waiting on our next Because even married couples, they're in the waiting room too. They're waiting on their necks. Someone who has a a companion may not even be married. They've just been together for a whole lot of years. They're in the waiting room too, waiting on their necks. So stop thinking that woe is me. I'm going to die by myself. Like if I'm not with someone, life ain't lifing. It ain't giving me all I want. Change your mind. Stop that stinking thinking. What's the cliche? If you change your mind, you'll change your life. So I had to have this very quick conversation. Come on, girlfriend. Come on, boyfriend. Stay focused on things above the earth. Not dead situations. Not your past. Not the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And stop looking around. Stop looking around. Stop being so easily distracted. Because you don't know that walk. You only know yours. Make yours worthwhile. Delight yourself also in him. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Align with God. And he will align with you. I cannot wait until we sit down at the table tomorrow. April 12th, 7.30 p.m. You guys, can I tell you, I am literally just sitting here in my chair. I don't have a head set on. I am not behind a microphone. I am just literally, you getting a huge piece of me right now because (laughs) a random piece of me. But I had to get on here to encourage you guys. We're all in the waiting room. We're doing it together. Change your disposition. Change your outlook on being in this waiting room. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it won't always be like this. 
The Lord will perfect that concerning me sooner or later. Turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. It's turning around for you. All right, y'all. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for just chilling with me just for a few minutes. Facebook Live, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. You're going to get Denisha. You're going to get Delisa. You're going to get us. And I love you so much. Make it, make it, make it great.